Welcome to the Canva Classroom, everybody. I'm so glad you're learning with me today. If you're not familiar with the Canva Classroom, what I do is teach tips and tricks and techniques about how to use Canva. And today's technique is brought to you by someone that asked the question, can Canva create the faded into background effect? Let's get started. In order to create this effect, there are two skills you really need to know. When you have an element that has a color panel up here like this, you are going to need to change all three colors to white. Just like that. For this element, we're going to need to change it to white as well. You will click on Edit Image. This is what it will look like. Yours might look a little different. You're going to want Duo Tone. If Duo Tone is not there, then type in Duo. Duo Tone will pop up. It doesn't matter which one you click because we're going to change the color anyway. See Controls. So click the Control Panel. We will change the highlights to white and the shadow. To white. I clicked apply and now I wait. I wait for it to finish processing. And I hope you remember to subscribe so you can see more tutorials like this every week. There we go. Those are the two base skills that you need to know to be able to do this tutorial. Later on, I'm going to include a bonus tip on how to turn a color image into a black and white one. Our background image needs to be a black and white image. This is the one that I'm choosing. It's called Grayscale Photography of Basketball Hoop. Right click the image, set image as background. And then what I'm going to do for this one is double click it, go scroll up a little bit and grab the white circle to make it a little bit larger. This may or may not be necessary depending on your image. And then I'll click the image again, go up to the transparency button and move it down to 50%. You might need to customize yours at more transparency or less transparency depending on your look. But I have found that this one works really well for this effect that I'm creating. Our next step will include a secondary image. In order to do that, we're going to need a, what do I need? What's the Canva Classroom's favorite element to use? If you said grid, you get a gold star. And then go ahead, click on that grid and click on the transparency, type in 60 three. And no matter what image I pop in, it's going to have the 63% transparency. I will use this image. This image, just for reference, is photo of man doing dunk. We're going to slot it in just like that. You might want to turn this one into a black and white image. How do you do that? It's very easy. Click on Edit Image and click on Filters. See All. Scroll down and you can change it to a gray scale. You can even see controls and change the intensity so that some of the color pops through if you like. Now that we have it where we want it, it's on to the next step you are going to want to lock the grid. If you know why we should lock the grid, comment below with the answer. I'm going to choose a Canva image, a Canva Pro image, just called basketball. You're going to want to choose your athlete's image or whoever you're using for this effect. I'm going to make him larger and put him over just a little bit. This one automatically had no background, 
but we'll talk about that a little later on if you need to know how to remove the background for your image. I actually want to adjust this grid image just a little bit. I want to move it over to the left. And so I'm going to unlock it and see what it looks like if I just move it over like this. But I don't like that harsh line. However, that harsh line might be covered up by the effect. We're going to go with it. Locked it back. I want to make sure that there's enough room up here for a name. If there's not, I can always adjust him later. We're going to create the fade in effect now. That's right. We need a grid. Go to all. Here's the grid. And type in overlay. Go to graphics. This is the overlay I will use, but you could use any of them really. In fact, to show that to you, why don't I use this one instead? I slid that gradient into the image. I'm going to click the image and click edit image. This is where we use the duotone effect. Let's see if I click classic, if a white will be there. It is, a white's already there. So if you click classic, half your job is done. And then another white and apply. Here is a tutorial thumbnail and there's an info card after this one. That's right, next I want you to watch one of these tutorials because I think they'll really help you with your design. So here it is. It is not quite as dark as the other one. So what I'm going to do is just duplicate it. And I'm going to duplicate it one more time. Actually, let's just send him forward. That's going to be easiest. We're going to position it. Yep, it's position center middle, position center middle. So if you get one and you don't like or you think that the image effect is too light, then just duplicate it and add more. And that's why I lock my top grid. Actually, I need to unlock it. I need to duplicate him. I'm going to duplicate them and send them off there. And then I'm going to duplicate this one, lock the back grid, and put this one in front and send it backwards and lock it. So now everything's there. And we'll put this guy right on top of the other guy. Now you have the effect. There's one final step to do. You should still have your elements tab open with overlay and you're going to choose this element, which is called lime green blur circle illustration. And we're going to change it to white. All of these colors, just like I showed you at the beginning of the tutorial. And we will strategically place them so that the image is faded into the background. There is a little trick when I'm doing multiple duplications that I like to use called Alt and left click drag. And if you are using a Mac, then I believe it is the com But you just keep holding the key on your keyboard and using your mouse to drag and you can create that effect. I'm going to go ahead and create some over there as well. And I think that that looks nice. In theory, the effect is complete, but I do want to add some text. That's going to be next. This is three text effects, and this first one is actually a good, well, it's the color that's on the background. No wonder we can't see it. This is light gray, E8, 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 with 
a hollow effect and the second one has no effect on it. By the way, these are all graduate at 118 and this one has a neon effect at 50% and it is the color D3532F. This one should be black. And then all I do is put the text right on top of each other to create that look. This is an element called Basketball Icon. It is a Canva Pro element, but there are plenty of basketball icons that are free. This is a smaller one at 31.5 in white with an orange background. I mean, an orange rectangle background. I'm having trouble grabbing D3532F. And then, of course, our little ones are at 33.5 and etc. It's on, these are on a rotation. I'm going to group these and copy them and then go down here and click on the image and paste it. So control V or command V and, and then this one, I'll do the same thing and put here and there we go. Now we've got the image, we can download it for social media or whatever we want. No transparent backgrounds required. For this one, I would download it at page eight. What did you think about this effect? Now, I mentioned that I would tell about removing backgrounds at the end, and that is what is next. The first thing you need to know is that when you want to upload an image, you just click upload and upload media. It will bring up your files and you can just click in your files that you want. I'm just going to use a photo that Canva has. Click on your image, edit image, and then click background remover. While it's thinking, that went exceptionally fast. It normally does not go that fast. Um, apply. So never mind. That's for Canva Pro. What if you don't have Canva Pro? I'm going to leave a link in the description below that gives a link for how you can remove it for free. However, I am just going to give you a little heads up that the resolution of that image will not be as clear as what you get with Canva Pro. And with that being said, I want you to take a look at this tutorial next. I want you to watch this right now, especially if you don't have Canva Pro. 10 reasons why Canva Pro is worth it. And some of those tips include how it saves me time as a content creator. If you create videos for YouTube, then you particularly are going to want to watch this right now. What are you waiting for? Click on it. You know you want to. Well, that's all we have for you today. If you have any questions, just be sure to leave them in the comments below. And I will see you Friday for our next tutorial. See you next time. Bye.